please. What is your name, please? My name is Marvin Hoganson. What is your name, please? My name is Marvin Hoganson. What is your name, please? My name is Marvin Hoganson. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real Marvin Hoganson and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much and good evening. This, as you no doubt know by now, is a game of deliberate misrepresentation wherein four presumably smart people try to find out which one of three challengers has sworn to tell the truth. To tell the truth is brought to you each Tuesday night by Geritol, America's number one tonic, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. All right, let's meet our cross-examiners. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Burden. My name is John Cameron Swayze. My name is Betty Furness. And my name is High Gardner. And I can attest that these people are telling nothing but the truth. Now, these three people all claim to be Marvin Hoganson. Now, only one, of course, is the real Marvin Hoganson. The other two have assumed that identity, and, of course, they don't have to stick to the truth. Now, panel, in front of you, there is a copy of an affidavit. Will you please follow along while I read it? I, Marvin Hoganson, am an elder in the Mormon Church and a student at Brigham Young University. As part of my college work, I have been teaching psychology and salesmanship to the inmates of Utah State Prison. Last Wednesday night, the prisoners rioted, captured me, and held me as a hostage. I was released six hours later and carried the list of the prisoners' grievances to the governor of Utah. I swear that the above statement is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Signed, Marvin Hoganson. Panel. These three people all claim to be Marvin Hoganson, who was held as a hostage in last week's prison riots in Utah. Now remember that only the real Marvin Hoganson is required to answer your questions truthfully. Each of you will question until you hear that signal, and at the end of four minutes, you will be asked to register your votes for the one person who, in your opinion, is the real Marvin Hoganson. And we'll begin our first round with uh, John Cameron Swayze. John? Number two, what is the most famous building on the main street of Salt Lake City, Utah? temple. Now, there's a peculiar feature of the temple that it, for which it is noted. What is that feature? Well, I assume you refer to the fact that only members in good standing of the Latter-day Saint Church can enter the temple. That's one of them. Isn't there something to do with sounds? No, that's the tabernacle, that's sir. That's the tabernacle. Now, what's the peculiarity there? Well, it has such perfect acoustics that a pin dropped at one end of the tabernacle can be heard at the other end. Is there a nail used in the tabernacle? Is there a nail? No, it's all done with cowhide. Number one. Sorry, John. Betty Furness. Uh, number three, in uh, President Eisenhower's cabinet, I believe there is a man who is a member of the Mormon Church. Can you tell me his name? Uh, yes, that would be Benson. Number one, can you name me a woman movie star who is a member of the Mormon Church? Why, uh, Lorraine Day. Uh, number three, in Los Angeles, there is a beautiful new edifice recently built by the Mormons. Uh, how can I see the inside of that building? Well, uh, you can't, and once it's been dedicated, you could go through before it was dedicated. Uh, they had tours through, but not after it's dedicated. Hi, Gardner. Number two, what is the name of the monthly magazine published by the inmates of the Utah State Prison? <clears throat> it's called The Jailbird. Uh, have they a chapter of AA within the prison walls itself? Of Alcoholics Anonymous? Uh -huh. Yes, they do. Uh, what is the name of the two papers in Salt Lake City? We have the Desert News and the Salt Lake Tribune. Uh, what is the name of the very large hotel almost directly opposite the tabernacle? Uh, the Hotel Utah. Uh, what is the name of the warden? I'm still on number two. What is the name of the warden of the Utah State Prison? Uh, Marcel Graham. Uh, was his predecessor... Sorry. <laughs> Polly? Uh, number one... Uh... I understand from the affidavit you teach salesmanship and psychology in the prison. Uh, after the, uh, the riot last week, didn't you get a little discouraged? Uh, well, we became a little discouraged because the educational system will hereby probably fold up. But uh, if they want us to go back uh, as soon as I re uh, return back to Utah, 
they want us to go back to teach school, we'd be more than happy to do so because that's our job. I see. Number one, could you tell me who the founder of the Mormon Church is? Uh, certainly, uh, Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith. Uh, number three, could you... Sorry, Polly, that's all the time we have except for one final question now from each of you, and the final questions will begin with John. Number two, a double-barreled question. The name of the present governor of Utah, and is he a Democrat or a Republican? <clears throat> he is a Republican, and his name is George Clyde. Thanks. Betty? Number three, how many uh, people were held within the prison who didn't belong there? How, uh, well, there was uh, the basketball team. Uh, the, the paper said it was the Brigham Young University basketball team, but it wasn't. It was one of the, the wards or one of the churches who was playing there. Hi. Number one, what do you prefer to smoke, a pipe, cigarettes, or cigars? I do not smoke at all. Thank you. Polly? Number one, what is the name of the chaplain in your prison? The chaplain's name is Ray Smith. Thank you. That's it. Time now to vote. So without consultation with each other, will you please mark your ballots and select either number one, number two, or number three. May I have the ballots, please? Now remember, the team of challengers will get $250 for every incorrect vote. So if the team has fooled our entire panel, there is a total of $1,000 to be divided among them from Geritol. Now here is Polly Bergen's ballot. She votes for number two. John Cameron Swayze selected number two. Betty Furness picked number two. I Gardner voted for number two. All right, the votes are all in and the minds are all made up. Now, let's find out which man was held as a hostage at the Utah prison break last week. Will the real Marvin Hoganson please stand up? Thank you very much, Marvin. Number two, would you tell us who you really are? <clears throat> yes, my name is Martin Nalder. I'm a senior medical student at Cornell University Medical College here in New York City. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and uh, number three, how about you, sir? My name is James Hickman, and I am a singing student. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, I'd like to make it clear that I'd like to, do, the, to donate any of my winnings to the, uh, the uh, Jordan School District there in the state of Utah for help in the prison for rehabilitation program and for books and tuning the old piano and things that we need there. So if I could donate my uh, winnings to the Jordan School District, I'd appreciate it very much. Thank it you. shall be done, sir. It shall be done. And we'll be particularly happy when you hear that you fooled our entire panel. Which means, of course, that you get to divide among you $1,000 from Geritol. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed your visit as we did. Good night and good luck. <laughs> now may we have our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Colonel Julia E. Hamlet. What is your name, please? My name is Colonel Julia E. Hamlet. What is your name, please? My name is Colonel Julia E. Hamlet. All right, panel, once again, we will listen while I read this affidavit, a copy of which you will find in front of you. I, Colonel Julia E. Hamlet, am a graduate of Vassar College. In 1939, I held a job at the New York World's Fair. A few years later, in 1943, I joined the Marine Corps and served in World War II. Since that time, I've made the service my career, and I am now the director of the Women Marines. I swear that the above statement is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Signed, Colonel Julia E. Hamlet. And our panel will be back and down to our game, which it's time to play again. These three people, as you know, panel, all claim to be Colonel Julia E. Hamlet, Commandant of the Women's Marine Corps. Now, remember, only the real Colonel Hamlet is uh, required to answer your questions truthfully, 
Again, each of you will question until you hear the signal at the end of four minutes, you'll be asked to register your vote, and this time we'll start with uh, Polly Bergen. Polly? Number one, uh, who is the highest non-commissioned officer in the Marines? Women or men? Uh, is it different? Oh, yes. Oh, it is. Uh, men? General Pate. Uh, what is the, uh, the uh, highest non-commissioned rank in the Marines? The highest non-commissioned rank? Yes. Master Sergeant. Number two, uh, the highest non-commissioned rank? That's correct. Number three? Master Sergeant. Master Sergeant. Uh, number one, could you tell me what would be the opposite rank in the Navy to uh, Colonel? I'm not familiar with the Navy. I'm a Marine. Number two? <laughs> John Cameron Swayze. I don't you want an answer. answer I want two. my right. answer. Number two, answer the question. I the opposite rank in the Navy to Colonel. Captain. Thank you. John. Uh, number three, <laughs> what does the E in your name stand for? Estelle. Under what president was the Women's Marine Corps founded? Franklin D. Roosevelt. And when was that? 1943. Who was the first commander? Uh, Major Ruth C. Streeter. Number two, do the women Marines go to boot camp? Yes, sir. For how long a period? It depends. Where do they go? For what type of training? Well, I'll pass that. What was the original purpose of the Marine Corps? Not the women's, but the men's Marine Corps years ago. What was the original purpose original of the purpose men's? of the men's corps. What were their duties? Number one, can you tell me? The land fighting force of the Navy. Betty Furness. Number three, it says here you went to Vassar College. It's a rather well-known junior college for women, about 15 miles from Vassar. Can you tell me the name of it? I'm afraid not. Number one, can you tell me the name? No. Number two, can you tell me the name of a junior college near Vassar? No. Uh, number one, uh, how are the reception rooms at Vassar decorated? In the school colors, rose and gray. Number three, how are the reception rooms decorated? Some are rose and gray and some are other colors. Number two, is there anything unique about the decor of those reception rooms? Now or when I was there? I would say both. I haven't been back for quite some time, but when I was there, we were permitted pretty... Oh, you're talking about the... The decor. Not in our own dormitory. No. Sorry, I think we'll have to move along. Hi, Gardner. Number one, does a Marine officer have to resign if he, uh, I mean, if she finds out she's about to become a mother? <laughs> well, I would say it would be advisable. Is it uh, required, though? <laughs> yes. It is required. And do you get your commission back again later? No. You don't. You're through completely, then. What is the name of the famous Marine who became the governor of a state? I'm afraid I don't know. Number three, do you know the name of the famous Marine who became governor of a state? Uh, Joe Foss. Time now for just one final question from each of you. And Polly, how about your last one? Uh, number two, could you tell me the duty of a Marine, a male Marine, on board ship? The duty of a male Marine? I'm not too familiar with the male. Ask me on the women, it's not familiar. John? Number two, precisely where was the New York's World's Fair in 1939? Flushing Meadow. Thank you. Betty? Number three, if I told you that school was in Millbrook and that it used to be a finishing school, could you tell me the name of it? I don't think so, no. Hi. I got a funny feeling, I hate to say this about Marines, but I got a funny feeling the two of you are lying. <laughs> uh, number three, uh, are you permitted to fraternize with enlisted men? No more than male officers are, enlisted, are permitted to fraternize with enlisted men. Thank you. That's it. Time once again now to cast your ballots and vote. No consultation. Mark your ballots, if you will, and select, as usual, either number one, number two, or number three. May I have the ballots, please? No, I'm wrong. No. I think I'm wrong, too. <laughs> Now, uh, this is Polly Bergen's ballot. She votes for number one. John Cameron Swayze selected number two. 
Ty Gardner voted for number two. Betty Furness picked number three. All right, again, the votes are all in. And time now for the big moment. Let's find out which of these ladies is the head of the women Marines. Will the real Colonel Julia E. Hamblett please rise? Thank you, Colonel. Number one, would you tell us who you really are? My name is Phyllis Hemingway. I'm a housewife and the mother of two daughters. <laughs> I beg pardon, John? Our daughter's going into the Women's Marine Corps. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Number two, may I ask who you really are, please? My name is Mabel Jones. I'm a renting agent for Stuyvesant Town Housing Development. <laughs> Well, let's see just exactly how well we did here now. There were one, two, three incorrect votes, and that means a total of $750 to be divided among you. With the compliments of Jarrett Hall. Hope you enjoyed it, ladies. We did. Thanks very much. Good night and good luck. All right, let's move on. Incidentally, before we go on to our next uh, uh, team of challenges, I'd like to say that Colonel Hamlet has asked us to donate all of her winnings from our show tonight to Navy Relief. And now let's have our third team of challenges, please. What is your name, please? I am Harold Carr. What is your name, please? My name is Harold Carr. What is your name, please? My name is Harold Carr. Panel, will you follow along with the affidavit, a copy of which is in front of you as I read it? I, Harold Carr, am a dentist with a practice in Philadelphia. After graduating from dental school, I worked for a brief time at the government's atomic energy installation at Oak Ridge, Tennessee. I wrote my first song when I was 11 years old. Some time later, I wrote the tune you are now hearing, which is part of the score of Ethel Merman's Broadway hit, Happy Hunting, for which I wrote all the music. I swear that the above statement is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Signed, Harold Carr. All right, panel, these three people all claim to be Harold Carr, composer of Mutual Admiration Society and the other great hit tunes from Happy Hunting. We'll each question again until you hear the signal. We'll start this round with uh, High Gardner, Hi. Huh? Well, uh, number one, uh, what is the name of the young actress uh, that Ethel Merman sings your song with? Her name is Virginia Gibson. Uh, number three, what is the name of the actress that Merman sings the oh, song Virginia with? Gibson. Virginia Gibson. Which composer, number two, uh, wrote most of Ethel Merman's previous hit songs? Well, I would say Irving Berlin. Uh, number two, are wisdom teeth a sign of wisdom? No, not at all. Uh, number three, uh, what type of identification did you wear at Oak Ridge? Uh, we had an identification badge in order to get in. Did it have your photograph on it? Um, I don't really Was know. Was it a plastic material? It could have been. Thank you, remember. sir. Holly? I'm going to try this one with my glasses on. Maybe it'll help. I don't know. <laughs> uh, number one, uh, when Happy Hunting was first written, the locality of the story was different. Do you know where it was then? No. Number two, the locale of the story when it was originally written. No, I don't think it was. Number three? Different. I don't think it was any different. Before it was Monaco, it wasn't originally a different country. No. A different place. Number one. No. It wasn't. I wonder what that script was I read. Um, Want my glasses? Yeah, I, I think I may better try some others. Uh, number one, uh, could you tell me Ethel Merman's uh, married name? Yes, her name is uh, S-I-X-6. Could you name, uh, tell me the name of her daughter? Uh, I don't know. Uh, number three, the name of her daughter? Uh, I don't really know, unless it's Ethel. Number three. John Cameron Swayze. Number three, can you see my teeth? Yes, I can. What tooth is that? Uh, that's an eye tooth. That's an eye tooth. What do you call this one? I would call that uh, an incisor. There's one theory that the next tooth that the human species will lose is a particular tooth. Can you tell me what one it is? Probably the wisdom tooth. Number one, what would you say to that question? 
I would say that was right. The wisdom. Number two? Yes, I agree with that. How is dentist, number two still, how is dentist and music uh, allied, associated? Well, there's no particular association between dentistry and Excuse music. Excuse me, number one, what would you say to that? I would, I would say the same thing. Number three, is, is music used in dentistry? Uh, not that I know of, but I could say writing a hit song is sort of like pulling teeth. <laughs> like Betty Fernandez. Number three, is there a situation in a play uh, on Broadway where a dentist writes uh, music? Uh, yes, and there is a show playing on Broadway now. Do you know what show that is? Yes, I saw it. Bells are ringing. Uh, number one, who is the present head of ASCAP? Mr. Stein. Jules Stein. Uh, number two, who is the present head of BMI? I don't really know. Uh, number three, who wrote the score for Kismet? Uh, the score for Kismet, it's an adaptation, I believe. Uh, the music or the lyrics or what? Either. Mm, I think Wright and Forrest uh, wrote the score. Number two. I'm sorry, that's all we have time for now, except one final question from each of you. And while you're thinking up your last ones, hi, will you start? Yes, well, number uh, three, what is the medical name for laughing gas? Uh, nitrous oxide. Polly? Number one, who is your personal agent at MCA? Audrey Wood. John? Number three. Name some oils that are used in dentistry. Some oils. There's uh, oil of cloves. Uh, uh, Let me help you out a little bit. Would I be right or wrong if I said banana oil was used? Uh, it may be. Only in some ways. <laughs> Betty? Number two, who wrote the score for Little Abner? Frank Lesser. So there we are. Ready again to vote. Will you please mark your ballots? Now, panel, selecting thereby either number one, number two, or number three. And may I have the ballots, please? The glass has been held. So we start as usual with Polly Bergen's ballot. Glasses or no, she votes for number one. John Cameron Swayze selected number one. Betty Furness picked number two. And High Gardner voted for number two. So the votes are all in once again. Minds are made up, I hope at home too. And so let's find out who the man is who wrote all the music for Ethel Merman's hit, Happy Hunting. Will the real Harold Carr please stand up? <laughs> yes, Polly. May I please just ask one question? Sure, go ahead. Number three, isn't it true that the original locale of Happy Hunting was Las Vegas and not Monaco? Not of Happy Hunting, no. There was an original, well, original book submitted, story. but this story was called Las Vegas. It has nothing to do with Happy Hunting. Happy oh, you Hunting didn't, was you a, didn't write, uh, you didn't base Happy Hunting on that script. Absolutely not. That was original story. We did okay. have some songs. All right. Let's okay. find out about the other two gentlemen. Number one, who are you really? Uh, I'm Sasha. Uh, my nickname Berlin is my last name. I'm a writer in television and radio for McCann Erickson. I know you, Miss Fernandez. <laughs> Number two, tell us about you. My name is Cy Silverman. I'm a member of a firm which manufactures machinery. Well, you've done mighty well tonight, as you can see. <laughs> there were four incorrect votes for a total of $1,000 you gentlemen may divide among you. Thank you very much, and continued success to you, sir, with your big hit. Good night. <laughs> And I guess that's all we have time for, panel, for tonight. So good night to you. Good night, good night, good night Bud. Good night, Bud. And good night to all of you. This is uh, Bud Collier. Until next week, reminding you to tell the truth. <laughs> Travel arrangements for To Tell the Truth are made through American Airlines. American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort aboard DC-7 flagships. To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production.
in association with the CBS Television Network.